Hi and welcome students. Today's tutorial will cover Microsoft Excel 2016 and we will be going over how to chart data with a column chart as well as how to insert spark lines which will help us analyze trends in our data. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing that I see here is uh, we're looking at Instructor A Morgan Farms and we're looking at our second quarter plant sales. So the plants that we are selling are listed right over here and they are tomato, boysenberry, broccoli, and kale and then the second quarter month are April, May, and June, and I can see all of the sales data right here. And then I could also look on column E, and that has my totals, as well as row 8 contain totals. Alright, so if I want to create a chart that analyzes second quarter plant sales, first thing I need to know is what data do I actually want to include in the chart? Well, in this scenario, I would want to include definitely April, May, and June as well as their sales, but I also can't forget that I have to include the actual row that contains the name of the product, which is tomato, boysenberry, broccoli, and kale. So in order to do that, I'm going to click right up here to the top left of where all that data is located in cell A3, and I will go over here to column D, and I'll go down to row 7. Okay, and this will be the data that my chart will stem from. Now it's important to note, do not include totals inside of a column chart in this case. Unless I'm just analyzing specifically the totals, I don't want to do that because that will actually offset my chart quite a bit and the total columns will look giant compared to the actual uh, sales of the individual products. So I don't want to do that. So again, this is the range that I want. To insert a chart onto Microsoft Excel, I go right up here to the Insert tab. And so then I go into the Insert tab and I look under the Charts group right here. All right, now what I do is I can look through and I can go ahead and take a look at the column charts or the line charts or pie charts or anything like that. But one of the buttons I like to click on is recommended charts, okay? And basically the way this works is Microsoft Excel will recommend charts to showcase your data. So I could go right here and click on recommended charts and we can see what charts will actually look good with the data that I've selected. So I could see I have a uh, col clustered column chart right here and then a stacked column, stacked area chart, eventually a line graph and then we see right down here a clustered column chart. So I'm actually going to choose this one right down here, this clustered column and I can see right down here in the um, in the axis, the horizontal axis right down here, I can see April, May, and June, and then the legend contains my four plants. So I click OK, and right there, it's that easy to enter in a column chart. Now, uh, in analyzing the data on this chart comes down to how you style it as well. So I do not want my chart to block my entire screen here. So I'm going to zoom out by holding the control key on my keyboard and then scrolling out on my mouse. Now how I select a chart and how I change my chart is very important because what I'm going to do is I'm always going to click right up here in this top left area of my charts. Okay now this is where I choose to click because as I hover over it it says chart area. Usually when you click in here it's not going to mess up anything on the chart which is why I click there. A lot of students get in the habit of clicking right here on the vertical axis or clicking the legend or some of the series points and you end up just editing that those actual pieces. So you don't want to do that. I usually click right out here anywhere that says chart area. Now I'm going to move this chart. So I click and drag from this chart area here. We see that it's noted, uh, indicated with the four black directional arrows and I could click and drag to move my chart. So I'm just going to move it right over here. And so now that it's in this area, I can resize my chart with any of the sizing handles here. And so if I wanted to say make my chart just a little bit wider, out to say over here. I just grab this sizing handle right over here and just extend it out a little bit and you can see all of the data looks a little bit bigger and it looks nice right there. So now what I'm going to do is actually show you how to edit this chart. So if you have your chart selected you'll notice that a couple things have changed on your chart so or on your tab up here in the ribbon area. You can see up here that whenever you have your chart selected not only do the sizing handles appear on the sides and corners but also you can see we have a new chart tools design and format tab. I'm going to go up here and click on this design tab and show you a couple things in here. If I say I wanted to change my chart style entirely, I could look inside of the chart tools design tab and go to the chart styles group and I have all of these different styles to choose from. If I hover over them for long enough, 
it will tell me the style name and the style number. If I don't like any of these, and it gives me a preview, as you can see, I can click this More button, and it will display even more different styles. And so I'm actually going to just choose this one here, Chart Style 6. So I choose Chart Style 6, and there we go. Now, a lot of you might be wondering where are these colors coming from? Well, you could go to your Chart Styles group and go right over here and change the colors. And it has a bunch of different colors. These colors are chosen from your theme. If you need help with themes, I do have an Excel video uh, that uh, covers themes. I will link it at the end of this video. So I could go over, over here, and let's say I wanted to choose these colors right here. I could choose that one, Colorful Palette 2. I click that and we see all of the ch colors are now changed. But we see one more thing that I have to fix on here and that's this chart title. So if I click right here on the chart title, it'll highlight with the blue sizing handles around it. And now I could type in second quarter plant sales. Now here's the thing about doing this. Notice that it did not change in the preview, but it only changed up here in the formula bar. It will not change until I press enter and then I'll see that right there, second quarter plant sales has now changed to show that. Now I also mentioned at the beginning of this video that I'll show you how to change or how to analyze trends showing spark lines. Now this is a pretty cool way to analyze trends because they only take up one cell per spark line. So I actually use this one quite a bit. So let's say I wanted to look at trends right here in the range F4 to F7. Well, I could go to this insert tab right here and then I could see there's a spark lines group right over here. And let's say I just click right here, line. It's going to open up a create spark lines dialog box. Now it's important that again, I'll go ahead and go back. I highlighted this section before. The section that you highlight will always be where your spark lines appear. So again, I click line and notice that that location is now listed right here. Okay, now the data range is the actual data that I want to include for the spark line. So if I click right here at the beginning of this data and I scroll through the range and I go down and I select that range, notice I did not include any totals in this range. I just selected B4 to uh, D7 here and then I release and there it is listed right there. And then I click OK and check that out. Now we have spark lines showing trends in sales. So now I don't even have to look at my numbers over here if I want to see a general trend. So I could see broccoli sales have been going up pretty consistently. Now another great thing about spark lines is that, again, they don't take up as much room as the actual chart right down here. So that's really nice. Now you can change your spark lines if you have them selected right here. As you can see, I still have this range selected, you'll notice up here in the ribbon, Sparkline Tools Design tab is now available. So similar to how we saw the Chart Tools Design tab and Format tab earlier, we see this one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to format my spark lines. So right here, I see my spark lines, and let's say I wanted to change the style. I could go right here, and let's say I change the style, I could click More, and I could see all these different styles. And if you hover over them, you can just see how they look. So I can see there's Accent 2, Darker 25%. And let's say I like this one here, Accent 2, Darker 50%. That looks good, okay? And now one more thing that I wanted to show you with Sparklines that's very useful is you could actually show the markers on the Sparklines. And I'll show you what, where that is. Sparkline Tools Design tab, Show Group, click Markers right there. And you'll see it adds in little markers so we could annotate where each month begins and where each month ends. All right, And so that's how you create a column chart in your Excel spreadsheets as well as creating spark lines to analyze the trends within your worksheets. So hopefully this tutorial has helped you out. Hopefully you learned something from it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a thumbs up. If you have any comments or video recommendations, something that you want to see in Excel, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll make sure to at least respond to you. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.